Biology of Kundalini with Jana Dixon. I'm Sasha Bliss. We are on page 138, nerve transmission. So we've been talking a lot of neurotransmitters in the last little bit, and this is fun. So here we go. Potential energy is stored in separated electrical charges of opposite polarity. Potential energy is stored in separated electrical charges of opposite polarity. Separation of opposite charges requires energy. And uniting of opposite charges liberates energy for work, in quotes. What a cool thing. <laughs> uniting of opposites liberates energy. Separation of opposites requires energy. It's harder to keep them apart. It's harder to keep them apart. It's more explosive to keep them apart. Voltage is the measure of potential difference generated by separated charges. Measure of potential difference generated by separate charges. And current is the flow of electrical charge from one point to another. So the voltage is the potential, right? You have like your voltage on your plugs and stuff like that. That's the potential of the separated energy until the plug comes in and like unites and accesses, then we get the current. Now this is happening in the body too. Insulators like fatty cell membranes have high electrical resistance, while conductors such as membrane channels have low resistance to current flow. So the, the conductors are the like membrane channels, the channels um, a higher current is achieved by either increasing voltage or decreasing resistance. Hmm. A higher current is achieved by either increasing voltage or decreasing resistance. In the body, um, charges are carried on charged particles or ions. Thus, separation of charges in the body means separation of ions. The amount of current that can be produced depends on the voltage difference across the membranes and the resistance to the flow of ions. Okay? Uh, the voltage difference, do you have an equal amount of opposite voltage and do you have a lot of resistance? Uh, the cell membrane is a good insulator and can separate and maintain ions or electrical charges of different values love the cellular membrane. The difference of ions inside and outside the cells is controlled by channels, gates, and transport proteins. Imagine like all around every cell, just like a yantra, you have gateways, there's like openings, there's channels, and there's those proteins that are going to transport the information, right? So, <clears throat> the difference of ions inside and outside of the cell is controlled by all of these. And then how they're going to come together, because so, the cellular membrane is insulating, right? Um, and then the membrane channels where they connect, that's where the current flows. That's why you've got the chi running through these meridians and channels. Those are the membrane channels. And then, then the cells have their membranes. They're holding the potential. I think I heard that Nassim Haraman, a fantastic physicist, talk one time about all the potential energy existing in each and every one of your cells. It's just like astronomical and could power everything. It's literally like the hologram, the as within, so without, of the entire universe stored in potential energy in each of our cells with just the polarity separated. This is how powerful bringing polarity together, because we go from this voltage, this potential energy of positive and negative stored apart. Because as soon as they come together, psh, current lights up and it's huge amounts um, is released through the relaxation. Like think of how much energy it takes just to hold them apart. 
but then relaxing and letting together just moves that energy. And that is true in relationship. That is true in our body. That is true in our experiences. We're seeking to first notice the separation of opposites. First notice the positive and negative charges and how they are separated. And then notice how we've been in resistance to bringing them together because we're kind of freaked out what that looks like and maybe rightfully so. You know, in our evolution, we don't want to take too much too soon. So even if we know that phew, you can be king, you can be queen, like putting that crown on too soon releases an avalanche of maybe something that you aren't prepared to handle yet, right? So there is something in, you know, don't cast pearls before swine is like a biblical verse, right? But it's, you know, when the teacher, when the student's ready, the teacher appears kind of thing. So the surrender process to this, yes, you're not really trying. And she mentions over and over in this book, she's not suggesting you try to awaken. She's not uh, suggesting you force the awakening. But as we notice naturally, and naturally just means in the course of our maturation, as it becomes time for us to notice, as actually our chemistry is built and wired to notice now, it will naturally notice where the separation of opposites, how we're holding energy apart, and we'll begin to want to do like shadow work integration. We'll want to look at our opposing polarities in ourself and decide to bring them together. We'll want to start loving parts of ourself that previously were like, I hate that about me, or I wish I didn't do that. Um, or those negative voices in our head, we finally get to a point where we actually want to because we can feel that it takes more energy to beat up on ourselves than it does to just love ourselves. Actually, just loving and integrating releases tons of energy, and that's also what we call growing up and maturing. Okay, where were we? <laughs> uh, the difference, yeah, okay, so higher concentrations of. And a positive. Man, I am really not good at remembering all of these abbreviations. I don't know if you are. I'm just peeking back to see if I need like my kids periodic table chart in front of me. <laughs> um, higher concentrations of Na plus, and I can't seem to find it, um, outside than inside. So if we have higher concentration of this outside than inside and higher K plus inside than outside. Um, but overall, there's more Na plus outside than K plus inside. This makes the inside of the nerve cells negatively charged and the outside positively charged. So she's talking about um, the difference of ions inside and outside of the cell is controlled by the channels and gates. So if we have higher, ch higher concentrations outside than inside, of different um, neurotransmitters, I guess, is what we're talking about, uh, then this makes the inside of the nerve cells negatively charged and outside positively. Okay, so the insulating capacity, let's see if we can get back on track with this, of the cell membrane allows for the production of an electrical or chemical concentration difference or gradient from one side of the membrane to the other. So that insulator is allowing a differentiation, right? Currents, that's keeping them apart. Currents in the body is the flow of ions toward their opposite charge. So anytime we have a current, we have the polarities coming together. So that's so cool because that's also saying if you're in the flow, you're accepting the good with the bad. You're going along with it. You're not in resistance to that flow. And if you are, then you get like a block. You get like an energy and that can result in pain in the body or emotional upset or something's going like it's not going to flow this way that's not the way the river wants to flow so it will dam itself up either emotionally in our body or in our relationships or experiences because the current is where the opposites come together and they just flow and i think a relationship that's you know meant to be does that at least most of the time 
and especially initially to initiate because you want to be pulled into the thing. You want to be pulled into the current. It's harder to get out of the current once you're in it. If you've surrendered to a current already, a, a relationship, if you've surrendered in love and you both have, then your resistance is gone and you said yes. You know, if only one is jumping in or saying they're jumping in, then it's not really happening. There's still, still a separation. The energy is not released. There's still like that resistance. Um, so, but the insulating capacity of the cellular membrane allows for this, allows to keep the electrical charge apart almost like until it's time. You know, that's why we don't automatically flow with every person because there are points at which our awakening journey crosses very crucial junctures with other people. And those other people are aspects of us, but they're in like the webbing, right? The netting. And we're meant to, we're almost like fated or destined to cross lines with people, you know, and if we're meant to have relationships or have children, you know, that can be a whole other like neuro network in the bigger sense. Um, but then it's like, if that if that pathway or that current or that relationship is not meant to continue, if it has other ways it's supposed to connect and those life currents don't continue side by side, or maybe they do, but way later or in a different way, or maybe not at all. Maybe they just come and they connect in that spot and then they go off. If we cannot cope with that, if we try to keep that, it's like we actually I think, like I believe that's how a cancerous sort of situation begins to develop because we create all this resistance to the natural current, the flow, which is literally our life force in our body and our meridians and our all the points at which you might find pain that is like an acupuncture, an acupressure point. Those are all the points at which energy can stagnate. They're almost like choice points. Those are points at which you could make a choice about this or that, about this, you know, and literally like our body is the map. I love like Louise Hay stuff because she talked, she mapped out the emotional body with the physical body to say, if physical body does this, like knees bend and they hold you up, then the emotional components to that, she related to the ego, like it holds you up sometimes without much flexibility. But if you don't have too, any flexibility at all, you have stiffness and painness there. So there has to be an identity. There has to be a sense of self to hold yourself up, to even be alive in this body and be a human and have a name and be doing anything for this individual. But to know when to be flexible with that because you're also part of a greater whole. You're also identity-less. You're also a spirit. You're, we're, we have a dual identity we're trying to integrate that can be a little bit, um, you know, feel like a schism in the mind sometimes. And for some people, it's very difficult to integrate these. But what I love about what this is saying is actually, you know, there's a storehouse of energy that when they're separated, they're storing energy. It's potential energy. And I think it's purposeful that it's being stored for a later time when it's the perfect point in the awakening journey. So to also love that about ourselves and to surrender into knowing that can assist that timeline to open. Um, this insulating capacity of the cell membrane allows for the production of a, an electrical or chemical concentration difference or gradients from one side of the membrane to the other. We just read that. Current in the body is the flow of ions toward their opposite charge. So cautions plus ions flow toward negative ions and anion ions, the negatives, flow toward the positive charge. Ions will flow down either their concentration or electrical gradient. Both types of gradients provide potential energy to power um, the movement of ions, the charged particles, and thus produce an electrical current. So they're being pulled toward each other again and again and again. An electrochemical gradient combines the effects of an electrical difference with a concentration difference. So again, they're like almost like switching places there. Ion channels. There are two basic types of ion channels by which ions flow through cell membranes, leakage channels and gated channels, okay? Two basic types. 
the passive leakage and the active gated channels, okay? So passive leakage is letting stuff through and then the active gated, like it has to have permission. It's almost like a gated community. So passive leakage could be like your regular suburbia. You can just drive in and out. Active gated channels is like gated community, okay? So these two basic ion channels. Um, first, the passive leakage channels, the non-gated, do not require energy and flow rate and directions is determined by electrical or concentration gradient direction and size. Um, so they don't require energy and flow rate. Uh, leakage channels are more open to K plus two than to Na plus. Since the electrical and concentration electrochemical gradients go up during Kundalini, we can assume the leakage channels become more permeable. So kind of like letting in the extra stuff. Um, the active gated channels require ATP energy and open and close in response to some sort of stimulus like voltage changes. Specific chemical stimulus, neurotransmitters, ions, or hormones, and mechanical pressure. We can also expect gated channels to be more active during Kundalini for voltage, chemical, and mechanical reasons. So, I mean, there's a very specific reason why the active gated channels open and they need a specific energy right they need the atp and then they also need some kind of like there's a shift in the influx of energy so they're like oh we need to accommodate for this and they open up there has to be like signals going through the body that would allow this so she's saying during kundalini and that's happening a lot these ion channels are being affected so the leakage is is taking on more and the gated channels are going to be even more active okay synaptic transmission occurs first with an action potential arriving at presyncopatic membrane. A depolarizing phase then opens Na plus and Ca plus two channels and Ca plus two flows into synaptic terminal. Uh, the increase of intracellular Ca plus two produces exocytosis of synaptic vesicles, releasing transmitter into synaptic cleft. Whew. Okay. I will try to process that. Then Ca plus two is removed from the cell by mitochondrial uptake with a C plus two pump. The transmitter then diffuses across cleft to postsynaptic synaptic membrane and binds to membrane receptors. Okay, so uh, the synaptic transmission occurs when uh, an action potential arrives at these presynaptic membranes. So right before the cellular membrane, we get this like action potential. So we feel the charge, right? Then the depolarizing phase happens. So the two have to come together and they have to flow into the synaptic ter terminal, which is like the gate where they come together. Like, are you going to match? Like, do you take him to be your lawfully wedded husband, you know, plus and minus? Or are you gonna be alchemical companions going forward in traveling along in this current, um, like that sort of little thing happens. Um, and if, if there needs to be a saying like um, mitochondrial uptake using the CA2 pump can like um, sort of like calibrate it or make it ready, like take some out, like <laughs> suck something out is what I'm getting out of it, um, use the pump. Um, then we have excitatory neurotransmitters, and the, which are those which can be can depolarize or make less negative the postsynaptic neurons membrane, bringing the membrane potential closer to threshold. So these excitatory transmitters can do the balancing thing too. Although a single excitatory postsynaptic potential normally does not initiate a nerve impulse, the postsynaptic neuron does become more excitable or sensitized. Um, so if there's a potential, uh, it does not like make the nerve move, it just like excites it a little bit, right? It doesn't like move it into the blend yet. Thus it is already partially depolarized. So it's like you feel them getting closer, like you were polarized before, man, woman, you don't feel anything, but like you get this excitatory response when the potential mate comes around, like you haven't like, 
gotten together, you know, in the current, but you just feel it so it makes you more ready to polarize. And I think this happens at a cellular level and that it actually happens in relationship too. This is exactly how we know when we have a, an alchemical potentiality. And um, yeah, it's interesting because highly charged in both directions, spiritual people say, but manifesting that in different ways or spiritual not spiritual or different opposing polarity sorts of people can come together because there's this potentiality for the alchemy to happen which is a blending of a perfect match of opposites you know sometimes you feel like you just met like your opposite but they were like the devil version of you i don't know if you've ever felt that way but i have and i've had that happen to me <laughs> someone tell me that uh, but I do believe that's because we're polarizing this match, this for an alchemical potentiality. Now, this is a whole nother video to go into about that, but what is an alchemical potentiality? I mean, it could be a mission that you have together. It could be a family, like children that want to come in with that particular blend of DNA, which um, that can create that, that draw together. And sometimes it's just for that child. There is a karmic agreement that you will bond and make this child and I want to say there are many many on planet earth right now that that is true for you you had a child with a karmic and that was the karma trying to make it anything else can be futile because there is that there was that alchemical potency but it's not again it's not something you could recreate, even though it might have been lovely and magical and stardusty when those two potentialities that were so strong that wanted to make a baby came together. And then, um, yeah, that was it. So there's a lot of those. That's how a lot of starseed babes, if you want to use that terminology, or just really awake beings, healers, and so forth are coming in through really strong polarized channels because they want that channel already locked in. Okay, and then finally, inhibitory neurotransmitters hyperpolarize the membrane of the postsynaptic neuron, making the inside more negative and generation of a nerve impulse more difficult, i.e. inhibitory postsynaptic potential. A hyperpolarizing potential can decrease the excitability of a resting neuron or counteract the effects of an excitatory postsynaptic potential. So these are coming in to like not make the current happen um, and they might do that by hyperpolarizing one of the charges. So, um, yeah, and those remember that current wants to happen for any neurotransmitter to run. So sometimes your body's trying to negate that neurotransmitter and inhibit it, or we use medication sometimes to inhibit a certain neurotransmitter. Um, okay having a pause for a moment thinking about how that manifests um, well I mean sometimes your friend can act like that inhibitory neurotransmitter if you're talking about a relationship uh, that would just kind of add like a negative polarity charge to your outlook or you know give you some bummer thoughts or um, share a story of a similar thing that didn't turn out well, something to overpolarize what they can see as some kind of dangerous attraction. And maybe you know something about this person or you've seen this before. I know that, um, I mean, that there is like a maturation process in the cells, right? And uh, remember we talked about, especially in the neurons, they grow based on uh, learning, right? They're noting and they're experiencing emotional pliability and then there's like a learning that happens. We spoke about that the other day. And so true, I think with the inhibitory neurotransmitters, like knowing what certain things are going to do for you. And so inhibiting a certain response, like live and learn, right? You're actually, your brain is learning all the time which um, neurotransmitters to use or hormones to pump and what that's going to do and correcting. So you have to have inhibitory ones as well to help out with the regulation. And then we'll end today with synaptic potentiation sensitization, which occurs as 
repeated release of neurotransmitter makes the postsynaptic cells more sensitive to neurotransmitters, producing larger excitatory postsynaptic potentials. Thus, repeated use of a synapse makes it more efficient, thus contributing to conditioning and learning. So again, if you do something over and over again, you're creating the synapse, you're creating the, the link in the brain to uh, repeat that and it makes it easier and easier and easier to have that thought. <laughs> uh, synaptic potentiation may also be produced by back propagating action potentials from the cell body to the dendrites. Synaptic sensitivity is also increased by NMDA or N-methyl deaspartate receptors in the postsynaptic membranes that increase CA plus two entry. Elsewhere, I mentioned that Asio Ito found more of a specific type of NMDA receptor on the tip of neurons in the right hemisphere of mice, and the left of these were on the base of the neurons. Um, in the left, they're on the base. So that, that kind of relates to what she's talking about is when the excitation happens in, our, in its growth, its evolution. So even a mice like is going to have an evolutionary capacity built into the brain that at some point... Um, if they're still alive when there's evolution going for their species, as we are right now, humans experiencing that excitation by also outer sources, you know, like solar flares are going to affect our brains. Um, the Schumann's resonance of the earth is going to affect our brains and the pliability and the learning that's going on and the experiencing of different, um, you know, excito uh, neurotransmitters and all, all the feelings that we have during these processes that we're having go on globally. I mean, even this worldwide um, events going on is creating new brains for everybody, for the positive or the negative or both, you know, new neural pathways, new potentialities for expression, new thoughts, new um, all that gets new chemistry. So for the good or the bad, again, uh, that's why it's so important to understand this sort of biology, that there is a biological process to awakening. So it is good to support the body in this, not overtax or overstress or make yourself go through things that you don't have to. Now, some of the stressors are going to be beneficial to help, you know, you get into a new current. There's some stresses you can tell are pushing you through something that you need. Some are stressing you out, like perpetually. And there isn't a um, real positive to that. It's actually contributing to dis-ease when there's never a break, remember, to the stressors and to the fight or fly and the hormones that are produced with that. Um, like adrenaline and uh, the cortisols and so forth, like this over and over wears down the body and it doesn't support evolution. Whereas, you know, certain events that the goal here is to learn how to recover quicker, learn how to surrender faster. If something excito happens, you get the benefit of that in your brain, but then you immediately drop into integration. You drop into meditation, you drop into prayer, yoga nidra, Laughter, breathing, stretching, like you don't stay in the mental discord or it, you don't stay in the anger, you don't stay in the hurt, you don't stay in the pity, you don't stay in it. You, re you are resilient and resiliency also comes through, you know, eating and feeding yourself properly, um, being in silence and nature. Nature really is what is going to help with that the most. So if you're not in a good nature spot, it's time to look for one. We need nature more and more. And it's one reason I'm getting out of Arizona because God bless the desert. But I need me some lush greens right now while I'm going through some personal awakening stuff too. So thank you for joining me again with the Biology of Kundalini. I'm Jana Dixon, reading and discussion. And we'll welcome you back next time. If you enjoy this, please share it. Let me know if you have questions or um, or get yourself a copy and you can also read it for free at lulu.com and yeah, we'll see you in the next reading.